the full study, we continue on the number ninth full of our study, 2 Samuel 15, 31. Bible, except for a couple places, only a couple, advises us not to be full. And yet, eight fools already that we've seen in the Bible, some of them foolishness falls on us. Sins have been the classification of fools. In 2 Samuel 15, 31, we see, And one told David, saying, Athahel is among the conspirators with Absalom. And David said, O Lord, I pray thee, turn the counsel of Athahel into foolishness. Now, there's one thing the Bible states for people, saved or lost. Whatever you do, seek counsel. And yet the Bible says, seek a godly counsel. Seek the counsels of the elders, of people older who know things. Where Rehoboam sought the counsel of the young kids that he grew up with, and they had no meanings of life. And we can learn from this one that some counsels, counseling, is able to be foolishness, of value, nothing, of no merit to one person or anybody. Here's a man that, again, conspired against David, who's done right, Absalom, who's done wrong, and he turns to the wrong side of we evil, wicked ways. And that counsel that was once good as it was for Athel, was seeking sin in the wrong way. It's not going to give you a good counsel, but foolishness. Second Samuel twenty four ten. Second Samuel twenty four ten. We read, And David's heart smote him after he had numbered the people. Poll. Census. And David said unto the Lord, I have sinned greatly in that I have done. And now I beseech thee, O Lord, take away the iniquity of thy servant, for I have done very foolishly. And what is the sin here? I assume, like the United States, that there are Governments that have a poll, have a census to say, hey, you know, how many people are here? Uh, the World Almanac and encyclopedias say that there's this amount of people in China, there's this amount of people in this country or this region, this area, and that is acquired by taking some form of census, some kind of poll, some kind of head count. And yet the law prescribed it wrong. To do what David has done. It is against the law of God to have that number. And the fact is, well, look at that great number of how many people we got in the army. Rather than putting our allegiance in God. Where God throughout the, the second Samuel, from Genesis to second Samuel, God has taken the Israelites who have been very few in number. Against a mighty army of great numbers. And it's still gotten the victory. And there's one thing that you read through the Old Testament. Is God is not associated with vast amount of numbers. He worketh with a few. There have been great men. Preaching the gospel. And great men over periods of time. But there's been you know. One Whitfield. There's been one here and one there. One Billy Sunday. One William Booth. One John Bunyan. One Peter. One James. One John. One Paul. Twelve men followed Jesus Christ. 
Jesus at no time ever said, well, let's count everybody and see how many we got. Oh, we fed about 5,000, but there was no definite number. And the sin of the foolishness here would be a country sin, not so more for the Christian. And yet for the Christian, I'll explain in a moment, is for a country to say, well, look at how big our army is. Look how big our navy is. Look how big our air force. Look how great numbers we have. And yet, Jesus said in a parable, what king does not sit down first and say, hey, you know, how many people does he have? How many people do I have? Uh, do I go fight a war with enough people or do I send an ambassador of peace? So count in your strength in your military, you know, say, okay, do we have enough is not to sin. Is when you count all these people, you say, wow, great, look how much I have. And then you pull God out of the equation. You pull God as the saving factor. And for the Christian, when he counts his money, he sees his, his, his bank account. He sees his stock portfolio. He sees his IRAs. He sees everything that he's accumulated. As that man who has, who has filled his barns, he says, I'm going to tear down more. I'm going to get more self-storage areas. I'm going to put more junk in more of these stuff. Look how great I am. God says, thou fool. And that will be, a, Lord willing, a later study. But calls that guy a fool because you know what? You put your interest in your population, your growth, everything that you have in finances and stuff and you didn't put it in God. So we have a council of foolishness and then we have a foolish act of Relying on other things, whether it be people, money, whatever, whatever of value, and overriding the value of God and his protection and his ways. It is foolish today to put your trust in money, how much you can get, and not put your trust in God. Because what if tomorrow, what if this afternoon, now I am doing this. It's afternoon now. What if the what if the, the market and everything were to crash right now? We would now be in another depression. It happened before. The fame of Babylon, according to Daniel, was destroyed in one night. Everything that Belshazzar had, that great big party of drinking and gold and silver that came from the temple of God. Gone. Put away for the service of God when Ezra and Nehemiah go back. It would be foolish to count everything you have and put your reliance in that and not God. First Chronicles 21. Make a big jump here from Second, uh, second Samuel all the way to Chronicles. And these are in order pretty much. Maybe one or two places we went out of order, but it pretty much moved right along the Bible. First Chronicles 21 8. And David said unto God, Here we go, David. I have sinned greatly because I have done this thing. But now I beseech thee, do away the iniquity of thy servant, for I have done very foolishly. And what we're doing is, is the same as number 10. 2 Samuel 24, 10, it's David numbering the people. It's that census. It's recorded twice. And when God has it recorded over two times, as the death, burial, and resurrection is recorded in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and Acts, and spoken about in the epistles of Paul and John and Revelation. That's in a very important fact. And yet there's only one place of the birth of Jesus mentioned. So a verily, verily that what we just read, number 10 and number uh, number 10, number 9 and number 11. Put in your stock 
in a census or in a mount table. And anything but God is foolish. We ought not to put our faith in horses, the Bible says. But in the creator that made horses, God. It's not in numbers. A whole book is dedicated to numbers. What is those numbers? That's the beginning of a nation. That's to tell me that God's a great bookkeeper. And the strength wasn't in those numbers. Because the book of Numbers for the children of Israel going to the promised land was a failure. 40 years of wandering around because they would not believe God. They would not trust in God. Second Chronicles 16, 9. Second Chronicles 16, 9. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro. It's not Santa Claus that can see. It's not Santa Claus that knows who does good or does bad. The eyes of the Lord in every place behold the evil and the good, Proverbs says. For the eyes of the, run, for the Lord run to and through throughout the horror. Satan only walks up and down the earth, Job 1 and 2. To show himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward him. God's watching us. And we are his. God's watching us. <laughs> Herein thou hast done foolishly. Therefore has, therefore, from henceforth thou shalt have wars. Now, Asa, the king... has put his reliance not on the population of Israel, the numbers of Israel, as David done, but he has put his reliance on the enemy of God, Ben-Hadad of Syria. He has called Syria, Ben-Hadad, and said, Hey, come here. Let me give you some money. Let me give you some stuff. Will you help me fight? The Syrians are against God. The Syrians are an enemy of God. And yet the children of God are relying on men of flesh. The population of Syria. The population that David had Joab go number again. We're running into the foolishness of relying on men and not God. There's a civil war between north and south, Israel and Judah. And Judah hires an enemy of God to defeat their brethren, the children of Israel. And God has sent a prophet to Asa of this foolishness and of this sin. It is foolish to put our faith in anything anything but god the first commandment exodus chapter 20 is god is to be first and all and i've fallen into those hands i have foolishly signed documents even thinking that god was in it i have put myself into thinking that what i had what i am what i was was better than god and it's turned to foolishness. Let's see a little bit more on this illustration. Psalms 44. Look at some cross references. Psalms 44, verse 1. Churches are falling into this realm, or are in this realm. You say, well, what are you talking about? Well, they talk about numbers. We had a thousand in Sunday school. We had 200 go out do this. We had 10 people go out knocking on doors. We got, you know, in the Sunday school, we got 80 kids. We've got, well, look at all these graduates. Look at all these people. Look at who we are. Look at what great it is. Look at. And according to Revelation chapter 3, that makes God sick. Well, hold your place in Psalms 44. I don't want to lose this. 
Revelation chapter 3. Hold your place at Psalms 1. And this is one of those ones that the Lord just laid on my heart about relying on other things other than God. Revelation 3, 14. I apologize, but keep your place in Psalms. Watch the Laodicean church age that we are in today. The period of the church age we are in is Revelation 3, 14 to 22. And unto the angel of the church of Laodiceans, write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful, and the true witness, the beginning of the creation of God, that's Jesus Christ. I know thy works, God speaking to the church, thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou were cold or hot. Make a decision. You're going to be a cold Christian or you're going to be a hot Christian. Just make up a decision. Stop walking down the middle of the road. So then because thou art lukewarm, neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. God, you make God sick. You're a Christian, you're a worldly in. You're a worldly in, you're a Christian. You're a Christian, you're a worldly in. You're a worldly in, you're a Christian. That's a... <laughs> What a description. Because thou sayest, I am rich. Look, look, look at the, look how big our, our bank accounts are in the church. In the church and in the families of the church. Look, look at my bank accounts. Look at my stock portfolio. Look at my retirement. Look how much money I make every hour. Look how much I make a year. Look at my tax forms. I'm rich. And increase with goods. Well, look at look at the sound systems. Look at the the, the bouncy houses. Look at the, the this junk we have. Look at the buses we have. Look at the, the the rooms we have. Look how many Sunday school rooms we have. Look at the great desks we have. Look at our great teachers. Look at the stuff in my house. Look at all my rewards. Look at all my awards. Look at all my trophies. All the riches and increase of goods. And I have need of nothing. I don't need God, what the pastor is saying. I can run to the bank. I can run to a Christian. I can run to the church. I can run to somebody, but God, I don't need nothing. And know it's not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. Because you're putting everything upon anything but God. Psalms 44, verse 1. When you put your faith in something that is not God and Jesus Christ and Holy Spirit, it's foolish. They got these things, you know, faith, love, family. Where's God? How come God's missing? I got faith, I got family, I got love. Where's God? You ain't got God yet. There's no love because there's no love without God because God is love. The only true family that's recognized of God is the family of, of Jesus Christ by being a child of God, be by the bride of Jesus Christ. Faith. You can have faith in money. You can have faith in goods. You can have faith in anything but God. And be wealthy and wise and great, as we just read in, in Revelation chapter 3. But you're making God sick. Psalms 44 verse 1. We have heard with our ears, O God. Our fathers have told us what work thou didst in their days in the time of old. So here are some faithful fathers, parents, that have given the testimony in the history of God. How thou didst drive out the heathen with thy hand. God did it. Not tanks, not missiles, not swords. And planted them, the children of Israel. How thou didst afflict the people and cast them out. God did it. God did it. God did it. For they got not the land in their possession by their own sword. It's not them. It's not Israel got themselves into the land. It was God. Neither did their own arms save them. Wasn't by arms, wasn't by weapons. Oh, we're going to go, oh, we're going to defend the gun, gun amendment. Oh, they're taking our guns away. Well, you're relying on a gun. Why not rely on God? 
in the light of the countenance, because thou hast a favor unto them. Thou art my king, O God, that's Israel. Command deliverance for Jacob. Though they will, we push down our enemies through God. Through thy name we will tread upon under that rise up against us. For I will not trust in my bow, neither shall my sword save me. Now there is reliance. There is gratitude. There is the history to say it has all come by God and God alone. That's not foolish. That is not a foolish thought. Now you can boast in pride about yourself. That's foolish. Psalms chapter 40 verse 4. Blessed is the man that maketh the Lord his trust. And respecteth not the proud. Nor such as turn aside to lies. Again. David said, count the people. Let's see how many are. Okay. Let's say you got an exact count. Military force men. Here we are. David, this is how many army men we have. And then when it comes to the time of battle, well, how many will run away? How many will rebel? How many will not go? How many will be injured? How many be in the hospital? There was a cause in the law that if a man married a woman, he's to be free for business for a year. That man that was counted, that men that you know just married a woman, they would not be in those numbers. When it came time to war, might be too old to fight, he might be wounded, might not care to fight. And yet God, in his best, greatest interest for us, though we are unworthy, would and could step in to take over our battles. God answers prayers by yes, no, not now. now. I'm not saying he's going to take care of all. Our, he may not. It may be a no. But if he's in charge and if he will. The wonderful great things that God can do for us. One more place. Psalms 118.11. So. Today's fool, you know, this lesson, is having anything but God. And anything but God, Psalms 118, verse 11, is going to count at either judgment, whether you're saved or you're lost. For the Christian is going to be wood, hay, or stubble, foolishness. That moment you have done something in your life to say, hey, I am not going to question God. I'm not going to ask God. I'm not going to seek God. I'm not going to meditate over it with God. I'm just going to go do whatever my will, whatever my facilities has me to do. But I'm going to do it outside of God. That's very foolish. Psalms 118.11 They compass me about. Yea, they compass me about. Look how bad that is. I gotta say it twice. I am trouble, God. I am in deep. I am in over my head twice. But the name of the Lord Jehovah, Lord capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, I will destroy them. Our faith, our reliance relies upon God. And then we got to acknowledge sometimes in our life we do foolish things. When do we do foolish things? When we turn away from God. That's when sin happens. To him, that, and I'm not going to quote this verse correctly in James, but to him that knows to do right and doeth it not, to him it is sin. And it's also foolish. We have an almighty God with almighty power. That everything we I can see with my eyeballs right now and things I can't see, 
I am looking north right now. I can see part east and part west. I can't see what's south of me right now, except for what's on the camera. I don't know what's going on in Alabama. I don't know what's going on in Mexico. I don't know what's going on in Spain and China or either pole, but God does, and he knows what that thing is doing on Mars right now. While admiring the beauty of all the stars in the, the, the solar system. That is the God that we're to put our strength in. And too many times as men we become fools when we don't. One of the problems, at least my problem, is patience. We don't want to wait. Another problem, a big major problem, is pride. I can take care of this myself. I know what I'm doing. And James records in a couple other places in the Bible, our life is but a vapor. We don't even know what's going to happen tonight. When I preach on the streets on Saturday mornings, Lord willing, I would tell them, it's morning. You do not even have the privilege to this afternoon. That last breath may come before noon. That last breath right now may come before dinner or supper. This country could crash tonight. The banks may close tonight. You may have the mailman come to your house or you may be at work. And you may get a letter from your boss to say your job is done. Our company's gone. There is no more business. And we can't even give you a week. By the end of the day, take your stuff. It's happened. I've heard that testimony many times. They go to work. And when they come home, they don't have a job. That's happened to me. I go into work, come home, you're, you're home early. Why? There's no more work. And then that job, that pension, that how much you made an hour, that salary, that position, that nameplate. What are you going to do now? And then Another thing we need, the Bible says, pray, uh, first, first, let's see, first Thessalonians, second, chapter four, second Thessalonians, first Thessalonians, All right, first Thessalonians, chapter five, verse 17, pray without ceasing. We don't pray. That contract. I had one contract in my life. Man, we prayed over it. We prayed over it. We prayed over it. And just every single thing just seemed to be open door. So the, the Lord just let us open. Open. Before we signed, we prayed. We told the lawyers right there and there. We're, we're, we're going to pray over this one more time. We told them we're Christians. This is a big thing. And we prayed. And we got the thing. And we knew there were certain problems attached to it. We, we addressed those problems. But then we realized the roofs had a problem. <laughs> we didn't know. And then went to work. Something happened. I got a phone call that afternoon, and long short the story is, within within about a week, you're no longer employed with us. Man, we prayed, 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 prayed. I don't understand, and we don't understand. We don't have that facility. To comprehend tomorrow. We have to-do lists. But 
There's always more spaces on that to-do list than what we have to do. And we've got to seek God and what those blanks are. One person running a red light can ruin your life. One person that has too much alcohol can ruin your life. Sitting at your desk doing what you do and one little blood vessel can change your whole life. Going to the doctor's office can change your whole life. We don't know. And when we put our faith in nouns, person, places, or things, we are foolish. Buildings are not going to put crowns on our heads at the judgment seat of Christ. Proper names, people, are not going to put us rewards in our hands except Jesus Christ and God the Father. And things are not going to value at the judgment seat of Christ if they are in the form of wood, hay, or stubble. They're going to burn up. And what is gold, silver, and precious stones? All those things we ask God and sought God about. Things happen. We may do things and we seek God and we, we may get, hey, you know, go ahead. I can't understand that. I can't fathom that. It may be those trials. Or maybe, just maybe, maybe we put our faith in a little more what I did and not what God has done. David sinned and is mentioned twice. And then there was the counsel of a man who turned wicked. And you got to realize that that person that's sitting on that other side of that desk. Though they may say, though they may cry, their best interest is not your interest. Because they may be getting a commission. It may have to keep their job. Listen, if a man goes to work as a salesman and doesn't sell anything in the days of his life, he does not have a job as a salesman. We've had agents come and sat with the agent and still have not been told all the full story. Though he had the books, though he had the papers, though he had the great voice. Men are sinners. All have come short of glory of God. All have sinned. There is none righteous. And yet in our trials and tribulations, we turn to that great sinful man, whoever they be. And we don't turn to God. We count the, the George Washington, the Ben Franklins, and the Thomas Jeffersons. They're dead. And some of them may have died without Jesus Christ and may be in hell today. And that's what you're going to count their, their faces? Benjamin Franklin wasn't even a president, and yet he shows up on one of the bills. You can't talk to Benjamin Franklin, but oh, we trust in him. There he is, 50. We're going to run to our, 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 our financial expert. Yeah, but have you checked your financial have you checked your financial expert to see how his finances are? I'm going to go to a doctor. I'm going to a psychiatrist. Have you asked that psychiatrist if he's going to a psychiatrist? I had a doctor one time. Lung doctor. Had very serious lung problems early in my life. Demanded, scolded me, you got to quit that smoking. Which I did. 
many years after that. But during that time, I saw that guy in the store one day out in the parking lot, and there he is puffing on the cigarette itself. I dropped him. Went to another lung doctor. That's a hypocrite. And I told him so right there in the park. I said, I said tomorrow I'm, I'm going to another lung doctor. What about the council? We've looked at the numbers. We've looked at the things. We looked at the nouns. But when we get council, who do we go? Many times I have been told many Christians will go find somebody with a, you know, agree with me on my sin. That's poor counsel. That's foolish counsel. The counsel of Rehoboam was they were not wise. They are not aged. They have not inquired the, the ability of living to make an opinion about anything. But the friends that knew Solomon, that grew up with Solomon, that lived with Solomon, all the wisdom that God given Solomon, he forsook their counsel and destroyed an entire nation. As, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> as a poor council will destroy a church and a family. As a poor council will destroy a family and a church. This country is destroyed because of the councils of people who do not adhere God in their lives. They do not pray to God. They do not read his word. Matter of fact, you've got a group of people given the council of this nation. They'll, it's all kinds of gods. And maybe no God, but so. We've got a nation of people who cares about the souls of the people. Oh, but save the whale. And yet the Bible says, is not you more important than a sparrow? Is there not a simple Bible knowledge of right and wrong? It's not. Even including with Christian counseling. I'm going to go to a Christian counseling with a Bible that's not King James. Has he studied his Bible? Does his Bible tell him to study? Because there's only one Bible will tell you to study. Studying requires for counseling. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a man that needs... Uh, uh. So you show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed. That's right. You become ashamed when you are a fool. That's when shame comes. When you've done foolishly against God, against God. And counseling would be foolish that, okay, in the end, it turned out wrong because you didn't study the matter. Relying on man that is a sinner and turning away from God who is holy and righteous. The entire nation of Israel, particularly, mostly of all of them, was a foolish nation when Jesus Christ hung on that cross. Give us Barabbas, the sinner. Take that holy man, that righteous man, and, and crucify him. Crucify him. A fool will uh, a fool will rely on a religion for salvation that they don't even have an assurance of. That's foolish. You're going to rely on a bunch of men and women that are sinners. They're going to get you to a non-biblical heaven that does not exist. That's foolish. That will get you at the great white throne judgment. As a fool to be ashamed. You are like David. You're counting all your men with religion. You're counting all your good works. Everything that you've done. That's foolish. You've taken the counsel of Ethel, of religion. Oh, this is what we teach. This is our tradition. And they're not of God. They are leaven. 
we, I, need to go to God with counsel and seek godly counsel and seek God in prayer more, if not all the time. That will keep me from being ashamed. That will keep me from sin. Counseling what we learned today and the senses and, and relying on other things is the very foundation of the first commandment. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Oh, my checking account is so much better than God. Oh, this plastic ATM. Look at all the things. Look at what this plastic credit card can do. Oh, Lord God, I want to give you thanks on this day for to after dinner because I got to go buy a whole bunch of junk at the store on Black Friday. Wait to January. And there's going to be a lot of people crying out to God, oh, boo-hoo-hoo, look at all the money I spent. Did you ask God? Were all those presents appreciated? No one got upset? I'll tell you one present that God has that appreciates all that receive it. The blood of Jesus Christ which cleanses our soul. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And there are foolish people out there who will not believe that, but believe something else. Let's not be fooled. But again, again, today again, this, I played the fool. I'm sorry to say. I've been the fool. First John 1, 9, I've had to confess that foolishness, that sins. Now, thank God that he's able and just to forgive me and cleanse me of my sins. But sometimes the reaping and sowing of this foolishness, this ashamedness. Let's not be fooled. And if we've been foolish, let's learn from our foolishness and not do it again.